Well, if, if something that I've noticed uh, and I very, very much appreciate, but players like yourself, Ralphie, and, and some of the other guitar players that I know, no matter if this was a, a, a two before with strings on it, you still sound like Chuck. You know, and, and sound is in your hands. It, it's definitely in the hands, and I totally agree with that. And I think you see a lot of uh, semi-pro amateur players. They're they're chasing what it looks like, what the name on the pedal or the amplifier is, to try to get that sound when it's right here, it is in, right here in your hands. And and you've been playing now over forty years. Try 50. 50 years. Sorry, I didn't mean to 50, <laughs> but 50 years. I deserve every year I put in. 51, really. Well, from, from what I read, uh, you, you played violin, trumpet, and, and tuba. Guitar. And, and you played guitar a little bit, Before and then you went into bass. bass. Mm-hmm. How much of that do you think influenced you on the bass? All of it. Okay. The tuba, I think, influenced me more than anything else. The mm-hmm. tuba. And then, of course, Slam Stewart was always somebody that I would listen to. Uh, and like I got a kick out of listening to him, uh, his vocal thing while he was playing. On the, on the tuba? No, on the, on the upright okay, bass, Sam okay. Stewart. Okay. Also too, when he wasn't vocalizing while he was playing, his touch, when he would play a note, you would hear it, it wasn't deep, it wasn't heavy, it was always clear and had a spit on it. You know, and this is before I started playing bass. Well, how would you describe your sound? What would, what would be the Chuck Rainey signature sound, touch, feel, or? Uh, somebody else has got to say that. Uh, I don't like uh, uh, too much treble on the bass. So I have a tendency to be more of a ghosty player. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about all. Someone else has to identify what I do. Jerry Jamat says that you're a cute player. He's about one of my closest friends. Yeah. He said, Chuck, you play real cute. Now I don't know whether he meant that positively or negatively. But Jerry's a very strong guy. He plays way back here. Yeah. And that would tear my fingers up. Yeah. So I play right here at the bottom of the, uh, the neck where it's softer, you know. You have a very light feel, it looks like, when I watch you play. Oh, uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I play it. I'm not as light as I would look. Not as light. Well, I should play. Well, once I start to get used to this new instrument, mm-hmm. I will play a little bit heavier. Once I get the bridge set to where I'm going to really right, like it. Right. But I do have a thing, I play a lot like this. Well, well since we, we kind of brought that up, let's go into the uh, the Chuck Randy signature uh, model here. It's it's only about less than two weeks old. Ten days to be exact. Ten days to be exact since you had it. Um, so, so from what I understand, you know, we've got a P-Bass here. Uh, we've got the P-Bass pickups. We have a jazz pickup in the back. But this, you know, this is a really nice bass. I've played it, and uh, I'm not a bass player by any means but I can hear the way the notes jump out of it. Mm. And, and that's what I would like. Something that's loud acoustically, I think you're gonna have a very good instrument when, it, when it's amplified. Mm. But on this bass, what in particular, other than adding the pickup, did you want with the bass? Actually, I wasn't quite sure, other than I did not want a brass nut here. Okay. I want a bone or plastic. Mm-hmm. For some reason, it softens the sound. It doesn't make the sound jump out. Nowadays, a lot of bass players are so upfront and it sort of kind of takes away from my old fashioned feel for the bass being a support system, like the legs of the table, mm-hmm. rather than the table top. Although the way they're making these instruments, uh, nowadays, you know, pickups really add a whole lot to it. I just noticed that this pickup needs to come up a little bit. Mm-hmm. In my sound check, I had a little problem with hearing uh, it being too dark. But um, I didn't really ask for anything, or did I? Did I ask for anything special? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I don't think so. I just did not want a brass nut here. And I wanted to be able to go down to a low D. So we have the drop D. Mm -hmm. Um, I I know these, we don't do that on the normal uh, four string, but we have two volume uh, pots here for the pickups. And we have our tone. Back pickup, front pickup, Mm -hmm. and this is the tone. Tone. And then we have the Trilogic bass preamp, which is built in. And then, of course, we can go passive if we need to. Oh, <laughs> that's passive. That's passive, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then our mid boost and, of course, treble boost on there. Um, but it's, it's, you know, for having the knobs on there, because I've heard from a lot of bass players who, uh, and actually one of our dealers told me this, and this was out of Nashville, he says it's got too many buttons. Well, I think when you understand what the <coughs> buttons are, 
and if you, maybe you need them, maybe you don't, mm -hmm. then it's not really too much, too many buttons. Just a good sounding all around bass that you, that you can play R and B, you know, funk, rock and roll, whatever. Um, and this bass here particularly has a really nice light feel to it, but it's still got that bottom end. We hear a lot from bass players about how much does it weigh. They always want to know. They always want the the uh, lightest bass possible. Well, this sucker here is light. It's light, but we don't sacrifice the low end. I don't think mm -hmm, on this no. bass here. So, well. It's going to be a beautiful bass, I think. Uh, I think it's going to be okay. I um, What I usually do is I never, once these things are set, mm -hmm. I never change them. As a matter of fact, on all my bases, even my fender, I super glue the knobs in place so that I can. Because if they're there, you're going to fool around with it. Well, for, for different session work that you've done with the exotic bass, how helpful has it been to be able to adjust the mid or, or the, the treble or I bass? haven't touched them. Okay. Like I put everything flat and just play it the way that it is so they don't have to worry about what I want. Because, you know, if you're a person like me, I'm a typical Gemini, I will try everything that's possible to try, mm -hmm. just by nature. But if I can't move it, or if, I'm, if my mind is set on not moving it, you can't move the tone of an upright. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Well, you change here, I would think. Yeah, for whatever you okay. want to do, but not for tone, but for something like this, but like I like to keep it the way that it is and never change it. Um, never change it. I've asked to do a lot of overdub work over the years, mm -hmm. mainly because the previous bass player may have been a better player than me, maybe the line was perfect, but the notes weren't specific. Mm -hmm. They weren't distinctive. They couldn't really hear it. So I have a tendency to play with the tip of my finger. Mm -hmm. So you get a little nail because I kick back and forth mm -hmm. when I play so that I get the same sound here that I get here. And so it gives the bottom a little punch and that sound trebly. Right. You know, because I want to sound as much like an upright player as I can. 